So, you've been hearing a lot about something called Project 2025. It seems important. You can see a lot of people have strong feelings about it, and a lot of people want you to look it up. But when you do, there's so much stuff out there that it's hard to know where to begin. If that describes your situation, this video is for you. I will, as fast as I can, tell you what Project 2025 is and why you should care. So if you look up Project 2025 and start by reading its Wikipedia article, it says that it is a political initiative published by the Heritage Foundation, and that it's outlined in a really big 900-page document. Fairly straightforward, but if you're not super into politics, I can imagine you asking, who and what is the Heritage Foundation, and why should I care about what they have to say? The short answer is that the Heritage Foundation writes plans for Republican politicians to follow. More importantly, plans that the Heritage Foundation puts out actually become real laws and policies enacted by the government, at least when the president is a Republican. You see, the 900-page document that details the plans of Project 2025 is actually just the latest release in a series of publications called Mandate for Leadership. The first edition of the Mandate was written when Ronald Reagan became president in 1981. Reagan loved it so much that in his first presidential meeting with his cabinet, or his team, he handed out copies for everyone to read. Reagan even selected many of the men who wrote this document to actually become a part of the government. The Heritage Foundation has an article on their website celebrating the fact that Reagan was able to act on about 60% of the 2,000 proposals in this document. There's even a section showing a side-by-side -side of the Heritage Foundation suggesting something and then Reagan doing that thing afterwards. Every single Republican administration since Reagan from 1981 until now has taken directions from the Heritage Foundation, including Donald Trump's. But we'll get more into that later. I'm not going to go into detail here about why Republican presidents follow the Heritage Foundation so closely or how the foundation got so powerful in the first place. You only need to know that when Republicans are in charge, they do a lot of what this group wants. Now that we know why we should care about what the Heritage Foundation publishes, we can look at what's actually in this document describing their plans for a potential Trump presidency in 2025. Honestly, it's hard to know where to even begin, with over 900 pages of text to cover, and I want to keep this video as short and direct as possible, so I'll run through some proposals of Project 2025 quickly, while showing you the text of the document along with the page number. There will also be a link to the document in the description so you can see for yourself. First of all, the plan calls for even more tax cuts for rich people and corporations. That goes without saying. Then there's abortion. One of the first pages of this document calls for conservatives to celebrate the overturning of Roe v. Wade, promising that taking away the right to an abortion is just the beginning, and calling on the next Republican administration to push to restrict abortion in every state in the country. Page 5. The plan calls for forcing states to keep track of and report every abortion performed, as well as keeping track of which state the mother lives in. Though, strangely enough, it doesn't call for keeping track of the father. And it's not just abortion. The plan has many ways of making it harder to get access to birth control as well. The plan goes so far as to say that the term gender equality should be deleted from every single federal policy and law that exists, because terms like this are used to deprive Americans of their First Amendment rights. Page 4. The plan calls for outlawing pornography and imprisoning those who produce and distribute it. Now, I'm not one to defend the porn industry, but Project 2025 identifies teachers and librarians as people who spread pornography, suggesting that Project 2025 will use this ban to block information that it doesn't like by calling it porn. The project will eliminate free preschool for low-income families, page 482. I have a question for you. How would you like having to pay to see a weather forecast? Project 2025 calls for breaking up and shrinking NOAA, which, out of the many things it does, provides tracking and warning for hazards such as tornadoes and hurricanes. Project 2025 says that what NOAA does is better done when it's for profit. As for the National Weather Service, weather forecasting should be, quote, fully commercialized. Again, for profit. Page 675. Would you like hurricane or tornado warnings to become paid subscriptions? What about needing another subscription just to check the weather? If Project 2025 comes to pass, it's going to be our reality. I want to keep this video under 10 minutes, but hopefully these examples help to illustrate the general ideology behind Project 2025. 
I haven't even begun to cover how Project 2025 wants to fill the government with Trump loyalists, or how it's considering using the military to crush anti-Trump protests, or place all Americans under the rules of fundamentalist Christianity. But if you're interested, please check out a website called 25andMe. That is 25and.me. It's a great website that allows you to select the issues that matter to you and your loved ones. And with just one click, it'll show you how Project 2025 will affect you with document citations. I am placing a link to this website in the description of my video. I strongly encourage you to take a look. Now, a lot of you watching may have a hard time believing everything that I just said. You probably have a hard time understanding why anyone would want the things that I just showed to you, and even if they did, why they would be so open about it. And you're not alone. You should know that public polling consistently finds that the vast majority of Americans disapprove of Project 2025, and that the more they learn about it, the less they like it. This is probably the reason that Trump and his campaign have been very consistent on at least one thing. Telling everyone that they have nothing to do with Project 2025. But what is the truth of the situation? Do we have evidence that Donald Trump as president would take the Heritage Foundation and their ideas as his guide for what to do? Well, I would say yes, we do. Why? Because that's exactly what he did the first time he was president. Here's Thomas Binion, who was a director at the Heritage Foundation at the time of the interview I'm about to show you. He'll help explain just how much influence Trump took from them. The Heritage Foundation has the mandate for leadership, uh, five individual publications, 334 unique policy recommendations, and President Trump took up 64% of them in his budget. Uh, does that make him the new gold standard of conservatism? Absolutely. Uh, president Trump is a conservative president. Approximately 70 former Heritage employees either work for the Trump transition team or are now part of the administration. Is that too much influence by one particular organization? No, I don't think so. I In case you missed it, Donald Trump enacted at least 64% of the Heritage Foundation's policy ideas. And about 70 people from the Heritage Foundation became part of Trump's transition team or his administration. And this is just from his first year as president. Furthermore, we have a video of a speech that Trump gave in 2022 at a Heritage Foundation dinner where he had this to say. The critical job of institutions such as Heritage is to lay the groundwork and Heritage does such an incredible job at that. But this is a great group and they're going to lay the groundwork and detail plans for exactly what our movement will do and what your movement will do when... Both Donald Trump's actions and his words demonstrate that he is very closely tied to the Heritage Foundation, and that he looks to them for both direction and personnel. We have every reason to believe that Project 2025, outlined in the latest edition of Mandate for Leadership, will be Trump's guide for what he would do in his second term as president, because that's exactly what he did in his first term. One more thing, the president of the Heritage Foundation is releasing a book soon. You know who wrote the foreword to that book? J.D. Vance, the man Donald Trump chose to be his vice president. So in conclusion, if you are anyone other than the type of person who would be in the Heritage Foundation in the first place, Project 2025, should it become a reality, will make the lives of you and your loved ones tangibly worse. It will bring America dangerously close to being an autocratic dictatorship, where all of us will have to live under the rules of a fundamentalist interpretation of Christianity, where the government will keep track of many of the most intimate and personal aspects of our lives. But if that's not what you want, there's good news. The vast majority of Americans, in poll after poll, have shown that these ideas are not popular with the American people. The danger is not that most people want Project 2025, but that the people who oppose it might not come out to vote to stop it. If you want to prevent Project 2025 from becoming a reality, please visit vote.org and make sure that you are registered to vote. Then, talk to your friends and family and make sure that you all vote to protect our rights in November. Thank you for watching and have a great day.